the Joe Rogan experience? I do go on different shows now as a military analyst. Uh, they ask me things, and I answer honestly, and I try to do it in a thoughtful way. So example being the uh, uh, the, was the CEO of the Roosevelt that uh, was relieved the uh, last couple of weeks yes. because he wrote this letter and you know was framed by senior level officials as he sent out essentially like an open letter. It sounded like They made it sound like he sent it out to his entire address book. And he went above the chain of command, and uh, so he was fired. And it didn't go through the right proper channels. And uh, it smelled weird to me from the beginning because you don't get to be in command of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier by being like, eh, just some guy. Right. Like, you know the military. You're in for like 25 years at this point. You're a captain. Uh, and I would be shocked if he had not go- exhausted every other avenue to try to get out what he needed to have done. And he's responsible for fighting that aircraft carrier. And he's also responsible for the men under his command. And he and now we have like 900 cases on that ship. And it, that's it's after a corona. It's we explain to people that the the the, the, tr- the ship was infected. Yep. So they had a couple cases. I think they had three to start with uh, on an aircraft carrier that had docked in Thailand or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe in January, early February, something like that. Before really things got out of control. So you're an aircraft carrier, and the only place worse than a, a ship in a circumstance like this with an infectious disease is probably a submarine. But he saw what was happening. And he saw it starting to spread. He saw it as saw that it was impossible to abide by social distancing guidelines. Uh, and once you do, when you actually have it, not just social distancing, but once you have it, how you isolate somebody, impossible to do on a ship. And so he saw that. And then the story is that he wrote a letter, wrote a letter, and it got picked up by the Chronicle in Northern California, and that it just went out to this huge number of people. So it went out to twenty people. It was, I've read the letter, it's four pages. It's very, very well done, very uh, thoughtful. It gives two courses of action. One, if we're at war and how we can keep fighting the ship. And two, if we're not at war, we need to take care of these guys and be ready for when war comes. So it's very clearly delineated in these four pages, very professional, it's on Navy letterhead. And it went out to 20 people. And for me, I thought, you know what? This is very strange that, that he's being attacked like this from senior level leaders, making it seem like he sent it out to his entire like Gmail address book. No, it's still usnavy.mil or whatever. It's not a secret, uh, secret communication, but there's official Navy emails that aren't secret as well. And yeah, it, it bypassed the chain of command, I guess. Uh, but that at some point I think is his responsibility. He needs to keep that ship fighting and who knows what the personal relationship was between him and the guy above him or whatever. I, I think there's something, the investigation will show it. And now and then the, the Secretary of the Navy flies from Washington, D.C. to Guam to give a speech to these people on the aircraft carrier. And he says that the, the captain that has just been relieved of duty was either stupid or incompetent if he thought that what he wrote in that email wasn't going to get out to the press. Meanwhile, the ironic part is that whole thing is videotaped. That whole speech is taped and there's audio that makes it out to the media. So that's the funny part for me. But then also, so then he's fired. A couple of days later, oh Jesus! And then the uh, the uh, secretary of the army or the secretary of defense now writes a letter, an open letter that says essentially the same thing as the captain of the aircraft carrier uh, wrote a few days earlier. Uh, that got him fired. So it's really interesting. And I went on some of these uh, some of these shows uh, and got to sit down with um, a couple of different people with military backgrounds, and I was the only one saying that something doesn't smell right here. And this guy has a responsibility to, to fight that ship, to, to support his, his soldiers or his sailors. And uh, something's just not right about this. And now we'll see what happens. But, but point being, yeah, I do get asked about these things. And I answer honestly because the, one of the other guys were saying on this show was that, nope, chain of command. He didn't follow the chain of command. And he should have uh, followed that chain of command regardless. You know, this typical Navy type line. Right. But being from special operations and being a free thinker, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be creative. We're supposed to think, uh, think uh, kind of red cell things from the enemy side, think about it from that side. Side of the house um, and do what what we do, which is why we get in trouble a lot of the time in special operations because we're kind of uh, not military. And uh, I mean, we're military, but you know, we like to like to not break the rules. But we like to bend them to a certain extent to get what we need done, uh, and that's just very natural for us. But uh, when you're sitting down with people that aren't like that uh, and don't think that way, it's kind of interesting. But point being, I do get asked about these things, and I don't really measure it against if uh, am I going to alienate people uh, or not. It's just hey, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be open. I'm going to be authentic, and that's what people can trust about. Me. Me. And they can trust about my writing is that when they read that, they know that I just didn't get it from somebody else. Like it's a part of me somehow. And it's very personal, even though it's fiction. And that's what you can trust. And if my protagonist
just as using a certain weapon or a certain knife or a certain. It's not just that I Googled Navy SEAL knife and so or someone saying and then he pulled out his Navy SEAL dagger instead. Like no, that's not how it goes. You're gonna know exactly how, who made it, the relationship, all that sort of thing. So what people can trust is that they're gonna get my honest assessment. And that's what I owe the guys in the teams. I owed them my honest assessment. That's what I owe the people above me in the chain of command. Uh, no matter what it did, I owed them my honest assessment because that's what they could trust. Uh, they, they didn't have to worry about whether uh, I'm just telling them something just because I think that's what they want to hear, uh, or I'm looking to get ahead because I never wanted this to be a career in the military. I was just in there to fight and, uh, and to lead. Um, but that's what they can trust is my honest assessment. And so that's how I, I deal with today. I'm just going to answer honestly, but it will be thoughtful. It's not going to be like an, an off-the-cuff craziness that I then have to go back and retract, or I hope it's not going to be. It's going to be thoughtful because that's what, I, that's what I owe the guys also was that thoughtful assessment, both up and down the chain. So that's just natural for me to do and what you're going to get today. <laughs>